hello everyone good morning good evening good afternoon based on your time zones everyone i hope everyone is doing good and i hope everyone is excited to go through our today's free webinar which is unlocking sc300 mastering identity solution for next gen security the region uh, that we are asking or we are saying that this is a next gen security because you guys will be familiar that nowadays from infrastructure to services everything is moving into the cloud now when everything is moving into the cloud one of the security solution which is known as the identity and access management it also starts shifting and start working with the or cloud as well nowadays we are having cloud-based identity and those are going to be your next gen security solutions and already many of you might be working from a long time for the particular you know same resources on the same topic same identity creation and everything and that's why we are calling them the mastering identity solution for the next gen security this is going to be a two days webinar today on the 13th of april and the 14th of april which will be going from the 8 pm to 10 pm indian standard time and you know if you guys are on the different time zone you can just simply uh go ahead and adjust your timing accordingly over there okay so uh, with this, I hope uh, to everyone, I'm going to be loud and clear and uh, you guys can properly hear me as well as we keep going through these sessions. You guys will be eager to learn, you'll be learning new things. And many of the names like I'm seeing over here are some of my you know, uh, older candidates, which I have said and we have discussed a lot of the other things itself. And you know, all those people, I would like to welcome all of them again and I hope you guys are doing good, doing great. And for those guys who don't know me, I will be starting with a bit of my introduction. I'm not going to keep it for very long. Uh, to be honest, we will be just simply working and uh, through the concept for the most of the time. So today we will be talking about the Microsoft Azure's Entra ID, which many of you might be familiar with the name, you know, your, if I would say, um people are calling that the azure ad you know aad and even i was very much familiar with it. to be honest i was very much familiar with the same name the enter id even i have to change my habits of calling it so from last few weeks although it's been a month since the name changed but from the last few months i'm trying to you know go with the newer name making it a habit so it would be good that everyone start you know doing the same so ever i would like to welcome everyone this is rishabh potial and i will be the speaker for the next two days for your particular webinar over here now in these two day journey we will be learning and covering the microsoft security one part which is identity next management many of you who are familiar with me they will be already you know uh, know about a few of my certification and everything to be honest i'm going to have a you know a small introduction session right now so myself, Rishabh Kotyal, and I will, I'm having around 10 plus years of experience in the system design, deployment, cloud, and very specifically to, you know, I started my journey somewhere from the offensive security itself. And from there, I moved into the defensive side of security, got myself the project of doing the pen testing onto the cloud. And from there, I just keep moving into the, you know, cloud, cloud administration, and cloud, secure, uh, cloud security and over the time period you know my domain become your azure cloud and in the azure cloud i am taking care of the you know different uh, different verticals itself from security to architecturing you know and to be combining both uh, i would say security architecturing over there uh, recently i am working with the your microsoft sentinel most of the time and with that i'm working with the microsoft defender as well side by side integrating working with them so that is there if i will talk about the certification lot in the series of az from the you know, 900 to 104 to 500 and from sc 900 to sc 200 to sc 300 all these are going to be the, the part of my certification i am an mct microsoft certified trainer and you know that's just a brief about myself and uh, as I was saying, many of your names I'm recognizing from my old sessions. And it's good to see all, you know, all those people back over here. So that's a bit about me. And I hope 
all of you are familiar with the infosec train as well so we are uh, one of the finest security and technology training and consulting company which is providing a wide range of professional training certification consulting in the it cyber security and cloud domain and very specifically in the cloud security as well it will be defining those area over here and you know, many of you are our uh, repetitive you know i would say valuable partners okay so if we will be talking about uh, you know this is a bit about the infosec train and we will be going ahead and talking about now you know a few more scenarios so when we talk about there is going to be a bit of the endorsement and the you know our trusted clients and we'll be starting with the something like the agenda for the day as we are on the day one today we'll be talking about understanding the identity and access management over there now in there we are going to talk about introduction to the iam we'll be talking about the microsoft identity and access solution implementing user identity authentication mechanism now as we were talking about the unlocking sc300 so before we start jumping onto these things so many of the people still, I think, I hope 70% of you are familiar with the SC series exam. So just a quick, I would take a poll. How many of you are familiar with the SC, SC series of the, you know, examination from the Microsoft? There is a whole series, Azure AZ series, many of you will be familiar. But for the security, there is going to be the whole series is starting with the fundamentals, going to the, you know, having something like the security operation, working with the you know your identity and access management solution and then moving into the you know data accuracy part so this is something that we are having over here right so in that particular one we are going to talk about the your sc300 over here itself right now right so which is going to be the microsoft identity and access administrator which is going to be an intermediate level of you know your certification exam and challenge over there so if we'll be talking about this this is going to be you know one of those trainings which is going to be of 32 hours usually you'll be seeing instructor-led training official timing if we'll be talking about so that is going to be the you know around your 32 hours which you will be investing in it and you will be going and learning about the Microsoft cloud-based identity and access management, how it is working, how it is being covered in the different different parts, and all these kind of a things. So when we talk about the SC300 over here, so this workshop is going to prepare you and create your mindset for you so that you can think about and start preparing for the SC300 examination. That is a Microsoft certification which is going to validate your expertise in managing user identity and access within the Microsoft's identity and access solution. So by passing the SC300 exam, you will earn the Microsoft Certified Identity and Access Administrator Associate Certification, which is going to demonstrate your ability to secure access to the critical resources in Microsoft Cloud environment. So this certification is ideal for IT professionals who want to enhance their cloud security skill, focusing on Azure AD, and uh, which is now enter id so it's a, a kind of a habit i will keep calling it azure ad multiple times which is going to be a cornerstone for the you know all the access control so throughout this workshop we will be deep diving into the not that much deep dive but just scratching the surface into the concept and the functionality that is tested on the sc3 exam, exam as well and it will be helping you and gaining the knowledge and practical skill set to you know confident you know confidently managing some user identity and access within your organization's microsoft account so this is going to be the bit of the idea behind the sc300 now if we will talk about many times people will be asking that you know who should be taking the sc300 exam right so when we talk about this so sc300 certification it actually cater for a wide range of it professional who play a role of securing and accessing within microsoft cloud environment so if you, i will talk about some key groups who can benefit from earning the sc3 uh, certification those are going to be you know somewhere like your security analysts right so 
first those are going to be security analysts because they are going to be responsible for identifying and mitigating the security risk and they can leverage the sc300 knowledge to strengthen their access control and user identity management practices second your security administrators who will be you know sc300 they are going to it is going to equip those all security administrator with the skills that they need to implement and manage user access to the cloud resources ensuring only authorized people users they can have necessary permission even your cloud architect i would say is going to be in this category so you know cloud architect are those who design and implement the cloud solution so they can surely benefit from the sc300 knowledge to integrate a kind of you know your in identity and access management practices into the cloud architecture and finally any it professional who is managing iam identity access management or eager to learn about the azure ad the common name that what we use with this is you know uh, your azure ad so the common name which we use with this is going to be your azure ad so you might be familiar you know people calling a ad azure active directory which is now renamed as the microsoft entra id okay so this is the common name that is being used nowadays for this one so anyone who is responsible for managing and administrating azure ad the core of microsoft identity and access management solution will find the sc300 exam highly relevant over there so overall this sc300 certification it is going to empower all the it professional to play a very critical role in securing the you know access to your sensitive data and resource within the microsoft cloud environment if you are looking to enhance your cloud security expertise and you want to demonstrate your proficiency in managing user identity and access with microsoft so i think sc300 exam is going to be an excellent path for you to go ahead and you know achieve over there now what is going to be covered in the usually in the examination so that is also very important to understand that what uh, you know path you will be going ahead and you will be covering over there so there is usually going to be the four domain inside these four domain there is going to be different modules that you will be going ahead and cover so when we talk about this there is going to be like you know your implementing user identity which will be talking about identity in the microsoft enter id initial configuration of enter id creating and configuring the managed identity over there and after that there is going to be the implementing the authentication so it will be talking about how you will be managing the external identities implementing and managing the external identities implementing and managing the hybrid identities all these you know things are going to be the part where you will be securing you know then you will be plan planning and implementing workload identities so you you know before that you need to go ahead and secure those users will be things like mfs right then you'll be managing the users authentication over there planning implementing conditional access policy you'll be managing identity protection right you will be implementing access management you will be integrating the apps for the single sign on so you'll be going ahead and using the app registration you know and you know entitlement management all the different features that is going to be over there and in the end identity governance going to take over where you'll be talking about the access reviews planning and implementing privilege accesses and monitoring and maintaining your entra id so these four domain are going to be the most important one in the microsoft azure so when you'll be start learning this thing you will be going with these domains over here now this is just the overview of the exam and before we start with the you know whole discussion on the thing so you know many times people ask what you will be getting so around 140 minute of a sitting time we have to assume you have to give for this particular examination where you will be having the mcq base and some of the i would say performance based questions as well that you need to complete to achieve the certification and maximum questions that you will be having is going to be between 40 to 60 that is going to vary because sometimes one question has the multiple option inside like they will give you a scenario who can log in so they will give you a scenario for whom multi factor authentication is enabled 
for whom it is disabled and then someone you know they will be talking about that user one is logging in so can that particular user log in or not so there will be yes and no kind of a button you have to select at that particular moment and this is how the whole journey will be starting over here at that particular point of the time over here now on the same note we are going to go ahead and we will be start discussing about the your identity and access management over here now let's just go ahead and start seeing few of the concept related to your particular uh, your iam and your microsoft entra id and remember you know i will be showing you the portal few simple demonstrations as well so that you can get your head around the different different concepts that is going to be the part of your microsoft sc 300 over here right so let's just go ahead and let's just start with the all your work over here so we will be going ahead now and we'll be embarking on a journey into the world of the identity and access management and very specifically focusing on the microsoft identity and access solution now we know over the time period what has happened the attacks they are becoming you know i would say more and more sophisticated so your traditional security methods they are no longer going to be enough so implementing a robust iem system is going to be very important for securing access to your organization's resource in today's ever evolving threat landscape over here now when we talk about to the you know uh, all these scenarios landscape so you will see over the time period different different attacks has gone ahead and has evolved over the uh, you know i would say in this particular time period so what happened is that there used to be one simple thing i in most of my discussions on the webinars in classes i always used to talk about very basic thing if we talk about the three pillars of cyber security always cia was there which was the pillars for the cyber security now what is happening is alone cia is not going to be enough as a security landscape so what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and we have to think of this something new so this is a very old concept over the time authentication and the you know your non repetition has been added to this one and with the introduction of the cloud so what happen is if i will talk about the change which we have seen into the last 6 years to 8 year it at a very really rapid pace so what we have seen earlier we used to go you know you guys will be remembering the time when we used to go to the office means if you have to work offices on premise data center or on premises resources were the one single go place now what happened during that time is there used to be all the protection like you will be having dmgs you will be having network segmentation then a firewall then there will be the you know ids ips okay file monitoring system will be in place and then there are proxies are going to be there you are you know all the laptop system were connected in the offices people were coming they were sitting they are working with them now what happened is over the time first people start moving up right so you were sitting at your home working from your home and your data was here so you were utilizing vpn site to site vpn you were connected and you were you know going to the offices you were accessing the offices and it was quite you know simple over there now what happened this first people start moving out then again what happened is your data your resources your services they also start moving out to the cloud over there now people are not in the you know on that on premises then over here what is happening that you know your devices also will be floating with the people so neither the people nor your technologies function means still there are on premises data center but some of your workload your data also shift to the cloud now like uh, there was a message uh, which was you know uh, from shri hari who defined this kind of the architecture in a perfect thing which is called your defense in that right so we were having those things and now no longer these things are going to be valid for us the reason being we have moved out from them many of the things your user your people everything they you know they people uh, you know moved out from them now due to this thing what happened is 
that we need to change our thinking as well. And over the time, who can access my data? Who can go ahead and work with them? For that, your identity start becoming a new pillar of security. Right. So identity start becoming your new pillars of security. So if I have to control someone's access, I have to give someone the access. I need to understand the identity and how things are happening over there. Now, when we are talking about this, so in the you know in today's digital age, organization they are storing a vast amount of sensitive data and relying on the you know numerous application for their daily operation. Now unfortunately cyber attack are on the rise over here and with attackers they are employing you know more complex tactics to gain unauthorized access to your system and data so one thing in today's session i was discussing that was something like ttp right you uh, some of you guys might be familiar with this tactics techniques and procedure so over the time you know your techniques your tactics they are keep improving over there so what is happening Traditional security measures like simply password, they are not longer sufficient. So if you are only using password, you know, username, password to protect your organization or as a verification method, that is not alone enough or sufficient to defend against these kind of a threat. And this is where identity and access management, it comes into the play. And I am just going to provide you a comprehensive approach how to secure and how you can secure access by managing the use your know, user identity and control their access to the premises over there this is going to work with that now this concept is not a new if i will say identity and access management this concept is not a new concept in the world of cyber security so many of you might have work with the identity and access management so when we talk about the identity and access management over here, so if we talk about very simple thing, right? What is that? I will be just talking about something which is in very layman term, okay? So that everyone can understand. So very first thing is, let's say that everyone is eager, you know, everyone is here to grow, to evolve, and even in the end, it comes to the money, right? You want to ensure that you have a good check. So what you will be thinking, let's say that you give an interview to the different company. You are looking for a good increment. You go ahead. You let's say that you give the interview to the team of Microsoft. You got selected, every process gone through. And now what will happen is on the final day, one identity will be created for you. Because if you have to work with the Microsoft or any organization, how they will be identifying you in the system. One thing is your face, but we are in the IT industry. So that is not alone is going to be my identity. So I am requiring a digital identity using which I can go ahead and access resources of the Microsoft on premises or anything. So for that, they will be creating an identity. For example, when I joined in here, so I got my identity here with the name Rishabh at the rate infosectoring.com right so this is going to be my identity over there so this is my identity so if you have any queries you can drop that into my email address as well so now when we were going ahead and you know they gave us an identity to me now it is you can see here relationship begins so identity has been provided to you now there are going to be the different different concept that is going to be over there so when we talk about the concept of i am i will come to this cycle again so i am it is standing for identity and access management and it is kind of a comprehensive framework which is going to govern how users identity are going to be managed within the organization and how access to critical resource is going to be controlled so think of IAM as a system which is going to make sure that only authorized user can access a very specific resource based on their assigned permission. So when you will be implementing a robust IAM system, organization they can significantly reduce the risk of any unauthorized access and data breaches, which is ultimately going to enhance their overall security posture. So this is 
the overall work of your identity and access management. So you have been given an identity. You go for the authentication next. So how the shop is going to be there. So first day when I came, I got a mail, uh, you know, before joining, that this is going to be my identity. This is going to be my password. When I logged in for the very first time, that was a temporary password. And then again, I was asked that, you know, you have to go ahead and you have to change the, your password over there. So I said, okay, let's change the password over there. And then I go and added the two factor authentication that, okay, only password is not secure. So I am requiring to go ahead and add the another factor of the your authentication as well. So this way I'm just improving the authentication. So whenever I have to prove that I am Rishav Kotyal, I am going to perform a particular process, which is going to be called your authentication over here. So authentication is what which you are doing on your day to day life. Okay. If someone is not working in the IM as well, right. So, you know, people who are just simply on the, you know, uh, other domains as well. When even you guys are accessing Microsoft, uh, you know, let's say uh, you are accessing the YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, anything. Okay. So I guess uh, your might be, I think most of you people will be using Instagram. So it remind you multiple time, simply going to go ahead and you know, you guys will be getting those kind of an option. So when I have to verify that I am a, a particular person, I need to go ahead and know the password and you know, prove my identity for the second factor authentication as well. Now, once I'm verified, okay, this is going to happen. Let me take some example over there. If I am logged in as the Rishab, okay, on my, let's say Instagram account or my LinkedIn account. So that means I can only view the Rishab's profile now. So it, it is not the case that I'm going ahead and I'm accessing Arshad's profile. Rishabh login as the Rishabh and then accessing the Arshad profile and making change that, you know, Arshad work here, Arshad is doing this thing, Arshad has done graduation, post graduation. No, right? So what is happening when we talk about this? So whenever you will logged in, so whatever access you have been given. So I'm just talking in the layman term right now. You can only access your account. And anyway, what is that? That is the authorization over there. Now, there are multiple self services depending upon organization to organization that will be given to you. Some of the organization give you the permission to create yourself some account. Some of them give you the, you know, SSPR services, self service password reset kind of a thing. But if you want, you can go ahead and reset the password if you want, right? So, okay. One thing is that let's say that you forgot the password. What do you know? What is your password now? your company is not giving you the self service feature. So what you will do, whom you will be contacting, you will be, you will be contacting the, your IT team, right? Whoever is handling the idea. Yes. IT support will be going, will be, you know, raising a request, a ticket. Then you will be just simply sitting idle. Then they will be reaching out to you, changing the password during that particular time. What happened is your particular productivity got hampered. Right. You, you know, you just simply your productivity, it got hampered. You are unable to perform those tasks over there. So no company wants that. So they will give you the flexibility that you will go and you can change your password. So that is going to be the set password reset over there. Then, you know, there is going to be the policies for things like the password management over there that you will be going and you will be changing the password. Now, very simple thing. When you are registering on any website or anywhere, you might have seen something like this that, okay, your password should contain a special character, a number, a capital letter, and a small letter as well. Right? Or, you know, some of the website will be giving, or even your organization might be giving you the option that you can use any three of them. Okay any three of that. Now, what is the reason behind it? Yeah, secure. Okay. Now, one thing is when you will be more moving into the bit more into the governance and all those factors, let me erase all the ink from here on the slide. Uh, like when you'll be going over here, there is a NIST stand, which is going to give you about the, what are the best practices for the password. So it says, 
you should not be forcing the password rules or policies onto your you know some hard rules onto your candidates or you know in, into your employees instead you should be giving them the choice because if you'll be forcing like okay one more thing in your organization guys do you have a policy where you are simply saying that in every 30 days or 90 days change your password got those kind of the reminders right so this is again one of the best practices that is suggested okay so according to this you can give the suggestion to your people you know candidates because what will happen if you will force things so if you are being forced to change password again and again it can cause something like uh issue of the performance over there like later i forgot you know what was my password and all so it can cause some issues so that's why we are going ahead and you know miss suggest that rather than forcing give them as a chance, you know, chance over there so these things are going to be the part now one more thing so one more thing might have happened to you let's say that you know you change password on you know month of jan then on fab again you change the password so you are having password one then you are having password two and then on the march you change the password three and on the april when you are again entering something like password one it said you cannot use the last five used password face this situation where you are not allowed to reuse the last password so this thing is called your password reuse policy right so you cannot just simply go ahead and keep using the same password again and again right so you know and plus avoid one more thing avoid using the same password on the different platforms as well so that is again one of the things that is going to be the part so you know i am just talking few more compliance thing you know with the password management over here so you have to follow some of the standards guidelines where to store the password so some of you if you are coming from the offensive side you will be familiar that attackers try to perform different different attack on the ADs. you know perform something like golden ticket you know attack over there so you know try to get and you know yeah brute force is very common very you know uh, complex ones are like golden ticket attack that you don't you know pass the hash attack so these kind of the attacks people try to you know even do over there uh, the, get the access of the ntds.dat that is a database for your username and password yes very common thing is password spraying so if some of you are working on the SOC centers you might have seen that the password spraying is going to be one of the very common attacks that you are facing nowadays so while you are in the office you are working in a single organization you are getting the same thing done now let's say that you work for the Microsoft for around 10 years now okay now after the 10 years you just try to switch into the you know amazon or you are just going to the google or any other company now so now what they will be doing you are serving your notice period and things start de-escalating now and you are going for the deprovisioning of your identity so you are leaving the organization and now what all the permissions things that has been associated with you that is gonna go ahead and that is going to be deprovision removed from your identity that no longer is you know you guys, you guys no longer required this particular you know, resources over there so these things are going to be the few scenarios that you will be keeping on mind that this is the whole IAM life cycle that we are dealing with over here right so this is usually what happened with the identity and access management over there now when you implement an effective right like i was talking about that everything is has now moved to the cloud when you go with the very you know, effective of such kind of a scenario so implementing a robust im system it is going to offer numerous advantages for your organization first and foremost i am going to strengthen your you know organization right so it is going to strengthen your security posture first of all right so it will be you know how it is going to do that it is going to strengthen your security posture by controlling access and preventing all the unauthorized users from entering into your system additionally 
I am it is going to simplify compliance with data security regulation like the GDPR and HIPAA and make sure that you have a documented process for managing the user identity and access permission. And I am it can also boost employees productivity by streamlining your user provisioning access management portal and finally a strong IAM system it can help minimize the financial impact of security impact or incidents by preventing any unauthorized access and data breaches so we can already stop multiple and numerous kind of the attack at the identity and access level so like you guys are saying social engineering password spring so okay personally i have seen a heap of increment in such kind of a attack in past few years you know since if i will be comparing the covid time we have seen this thing that how these things are going to happen over there now when we talk about all these scenarios and points over here uh you know i am and all so this is usually in any organization whatever solution i'll adapt to anything whatever you guys are utilizing it is going to be same as in over here now what we are looking over here is going to be the you know like all these things you know we are talking about all the benefits and all these things so if you will talk about benefits of implementing the uh, robust IAM system so you'll be finding out right so you are enhancing the security i am safeguard the access and reduce the risk of unauthorized access and data breach it is going to improve compliances which is helping your organization to comply with the data security regulation and industry standard like i was talking about gdpr and all it will be increasing productivity because your process is now streamlined i was giving you the multiple example you don't have to go to the you know your it support every time that we stuck we stuck so you know that is not going to be over there and in the end it will be helping you to reduce cost over there now on our on premises we are doing all of our scenarios over there now when we talk about the identity and access solutions over there now in the cloud we'll be going and to be honest when we are talking about the cloud and clouds implementation of identity and access management so uh, not that much is you know in depth but i have worked with the aws i have worked with the google i have worked with the microsoft cloud all three major user okay and in all three i have find microsoft's iem services much easier better and having more and more features over there so few of the features we will be talking about over there right on to these particular fast steps now when we will be talking about the you know microsoft cloud over there so these things they are going to be uh you know few things which will be helping you over there so we'll be understanding the significance of iam and we'll be exploring these microsoft identity and access solution so microsoft ad which was azure ad which we used to call aad is now renamed as the microsoft enter services even they have given a single glass pane and entra id portal itself right so which you can go ahead and access it very uniquely all the identity related features are going to be over there okay so it is going to serve as the corner store for your microsoft iam offering so azure ad it is going to function which is now entra id entra id is going to function as a centralized platform for managing user identity and access permission across all the microsoft services which is going to include your microsoft 365 you know, microsoft azure dynamic 365 so beyond azure ad microsoft it provide a comprehensive suite of your im solution which address different and various security need and we will be exploring some of these things one after another over there what is going to be there some features we'll be looking how to create the identity manage you know their attributes all these things we are going to talk about and we are going to look uh, and get familiar over there itself now when we are talking about identity and function remember when we are just working with this one so you know microsoft azure directory which is now entry id this is going to be a core over there 
and it will be giving us a diverse new security solution that is going to be required over there and we'll be managing complete user identity across all the network over there now just like any other IAM services it is gonna go ahead and it is going to you know give you some of the functionality over there so if we will be talking about the core functionality that has been given by the Microsoft Entra ID that is going to be the, your first of all user provisioning right so this Azure AD it is going to go ahead and you know allow you to do the you know if I will talk about the what it is going to be give you as a core functionality it is going to give you first thing user management okay just like any other IM solution second thing it will be giving you the access control and as any other basic one it is also going to provide you the multi-factor authentication if that is going to be a requirement these three four functionalities are going to be over there so if we will be starting with the user provisioning and all before that what i will be doing i am going to show you the portal the centralized portal for the microsoft entra id just allow me a minute and for this one why uh, i am going to use edge browser again guys i will be recommending if you are dealing with the microsoft portal today personally i have noticed that multiple time apis they interact better with the your edge browser one of my personal experience that i will tell you like i was telling you i am working with the microsoft center so what happened with that is i needed to uh, create a particular playbook for the automation what happened is i need to log in from my account to activate that or to connect that api with that so what happened is every time from the other browser you know earlier it was working just fine it is i think two years ago what happened is it was working just fine till now and at that point what happened is i was logging in and it uh, i was using firefox it keep giving me the warning that your particular portal is going to be out you know your browser closed too early right i was not understanding how it could be possible my authentication was completed i did it five six times nothing happened i try to change the browser i go for the chrome at that time i was using the uh, you know your brave as well nothing happened so it got you know it was quite a frustrating so over the time one of my candidates suggested me that i should be using the something like you know your okay look like it is oh, you know good thing is it is on boarding me i think for the multi-factor integration okay look like something you know okay so it is asking me to register for the you know multi-factor authentication which we haven't discussed about yet so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to switch the portal for a moment and you know i will tell you the whole process because that is going to be the part of our discussion we will be seeing these things practically so i'll be showing you this thing later on but for now what i'm going to do to log in and show you the portal i'm going to pause my screen and i'm just going to utilize the authenticator app and log in over there okay and i will then tell you very specifically that how i have done things creating the user identity and everything but first let me just go ahead and add this as the my work or school account over there i am going to just set it up okay just allow me a minute so i think it's been too many days uh, i keep uh, skipping this option and i don't want to utilize this or enable for the you know, multi-factor authentication so that happened over there i have added this i'm going to go ahead next over here and resume the sharing and this is going to be the my microsoft entra portal over there now i hope all of you can see this entra portal now 
yeah actually i was try to log in confidential data was going on over there so i have to pause my screen so now this is the entra id portal so what microsoft has done with the entra id or you know because what is happening like we were talking this is the identity portal for almost everything right it is for the you know your all the different different resources it was one single resource over here which we we were utilizing at this particular point of time so this single resource a single glass pane microsoft has created over this particular uh, point of time from where you can control all the identity and the access management over here so with this one you will be going ahead and you will be seeing if you have to work or deal with the identity this is the section you have to work with the protection it is there so you know security identity governance portal verified id portals favorites are going to be in there so all the things are going to be in this particular page so this is why here ah contoso by mean nothing contoso is like you know your company so this is what this is a uh, because i am an entity i have access to the microsoft demo accounts so this is you know whenever microsoft is taking the examples it used two company name one is contoso another is fabrica okay so here contoso is like you know going to be your company name so if in future you will be adding a ui into you know you are adding your company name brand logo that is going to be the you know, this contoso over here so this is the company name contoso that is over this part okay so do not get confused what is contoso contoso is nothing but the company branding nothing else okay so we have that branding option also in here which you can add in this particular resource over here so we'll be dealing with the identity user creation and all these things for the day right so let's just switch back to the slide so here we were talking about what is the core functionality of your user now if i will go back to the slide so user management first thing so in this one Azure AD will allow you to go ahead and create and manage a user account directly within the platform or synchronize them from an existing on premise directory service like active directory second user attributes under the same user management so you can define and manage different user attributes which is going to provide additional information you know information about the user like which department my user is working which location he is working from what is the job title so these attribute later on we will be using for the access control decisions over there so like if user provisioning is i created an identity okay let me take one example for randomly anyone so i am going to take the example of okay one of my old you know familiar name gigi george okay so here i am going to go ahead and going to take the example like i created one identity for gigi over here now with that this attribute later on i'm doing you know, adding that uh is reporting to a particular manager working in the your development department for example okay so all these attribute working user's location is somewhere in india right so these will be the attribute later on which will be helping me to go ahead and making the access control decision over there now apart from that user life cycle management so as you you know microsoft entra id if you have seen over there what uh, we were having over here there is this identity governance feature right so this identity governance feature when we are talking about this so it is going to go ahead and uh, going to react on the you know your life cycle management of the identity over there so entra id it is going to simplify managing the entire user life cycle over there including provisioning of the new account assigning licenses resetting the password and ultimately deprovisioning the account whenever user is going to leave the organization so these things practically we will be seeing as well then we are going to go ahead and we are going to talk about the second functionality of this that is going to be your access control over there now in access control i have put two points which you might have heard of one is very common 
which is role based access control so entra id is going to allow you to define different role which is going to represent very specific permission within your organization and you can assign these role to the very specific users to group and grant them the access to specific application resources or functionality based on their assigned roles over there one thing you can do you know this kind of a practice second thing is going to be the you know your conditional access policies now with the conditional access policy this is you know in some time personally i in many of the videos and webinar i call it cap conditional access policy so what it personally do the diagram that i have added is for the cap one additional thing in microsoft entra id there is going to be the licenses there are different tiers pre tier t1 license p2 license identity governance license so if you will be you know going for the you know conditional access it is going to be a p1 p2 license so additional money you have to spend if you want this feature in your entra id itself and then what it can do based on signal it will make decision that whether you have to give someone the access or not for example let's say that on azure cloud you are having a virtual machine right now you want to access that virtual machine so it is you know what you required was to log in from your azure portal and get the access so when you go ahead use your system it can take the signal now signal could be anything like which kind of device you are using let's say in your organization only you know mac is being used and suddenly this user is try to log in from a window device so what kind of operating system it is using that is also going to be a signal which location you are logging in that is also a signal which app which method you are using to log in that is also going to be a signal so based on these different kind of a signal you are going to gain you know take the your particular decision for example if someone try to log in from the window you will say no you are going to block the access or you might be allowing the access if that user is utilizing a very specific ip address which is marked as trusted ip address that is your office ip address if that window is from the office ip address you might allow the access or you might allow the access after that person has implemented multi factor you know authentication so whatever decision you have made that is going to be enforced and then that user can go ahead and get the access of the virtual machine and this is how the access control is going to work over here then these are the two specific feature one uh, okay you might have heard or you might you know be using this thing which is called conditional access policy so how many of you are using the conditional access policies heard about this or was familiar earlier two people have raised their hand good prabhakar has heard of this as well it means i got you know i i'm just looking that you know do i have a kind of a audience who is familiar right because this is an just a webinar so you know usually you can't just simply go ahead and you know have a introduction with one on one so yeah like you can think many of people are using it for a long period of a long time period so this is going to be the one of the factor then there is going to be the multi factor authentication which you will be implementing at that particular point of time now for this one you will be utilizing something like the well just like any other identity access even your google aws even on premises our older identity and access management solution most of them provide us the multi factor authentication which adds an extra layer of security to log in and you know login process beyond just that username and password which we were talking about so entra id to offer different methodology like sms verification phone call verification authenticator app and security keys all these things now while we are talking about all these scenarios over here uh, do you know there is when we talk about the authentication mechanism there are different kind of the authentication that happen 
multiple time in my security class or other security courses, basic security courses, I talk about those things. So like, for example, you might have heard, which we call, how? Oh, correct, Sanyam? Something you know. Then, something you have hurting somewhere you are or you are not okay correct correct answers so what you do the usual username password is going to fall under this category right a piece of information that is going to be the username and password that is something you know right then there is going to be something you have so what you guys have okay now we are talking about the authentication you already have a username and password which you know you know so that you know so something you know was username and password second thing comes as the something you have very interesting answers i am getting huh? I'm just reading it. I'm just get, get, letting it gather a few of the information. Hmm. Yeah, so a lot of people were calling it right. In simple term, like for example, yes, people are calling the phone, card reader, OTP, mobile, token. So very simple, like you guys are either having RSA token, which is generating OTP for you. You have a phone which is you know going and again then you're going to have an OTP like I just utilize the authenticator Microsoft authenticator app and use that one so you can have that as well. So you know something you have a smart card the tokens you know all these things are going to fall under this category of something you have a phone for the OTP a RSA token for the OTP again so that is going to be the whole part. Then there is going to be you know fourth thing something you are okay fourth point i'm talking about first something you are so what you are ah correct so biometrics are going to be used under the fourth one which is something you are so you are you know going to have fingerprint iris scan retina scan all these things are going to be the part which you will be looking so that is going to be the something you are then there is going to be the Somewhere you are, somewhere you are not. Correct? So, you know, already two answers so I'm getting. Geotag, geolocation. So, you know, like I was telling you that if you log in from India, I will allow you. If you go outside India, the IP addresses or, you know, your geolocation is saying something outside that, I'm just simply going to go ahead and simply set a no. Right? You cannot log in. So, that is somewhere you are. Now, very interesting thing, if you might have heard about this. Something you do. Okay. So, it will be going into the category of something physically known. No, I can have a simple example. And I can have a very complex answer for you as well. So there is something which is called gate analysis. Okay, I think it is going to be the most advanced thing. Now, apart from this, if I will start with a very simple example, you know, your picture password or, uh, you know, your something like uh, that pattern kind of a thing. Okay. Now, when we talk about these things, gate analysis and all, means you have a pattern that, you know, like a Knox password that you, on a specific point, you have to touch and it will be working with that. So that is going to be the one part, one scenario. Then there is going to be the another thing, you know, that is going to be after gate analysis, there is going to be your, oh, sorry, that is you know, one thing is touch password and all these things. Then gate analysis is something like, how you walk 
a particular kind of a thing. So when we talk about the how you walk kind of a scenarios over there, uh, there was a series uh, last year I watched in the Netflix, Kaleidoscope, and you can watch any episode in any order, right? So that is the one thing. So when you will be going with something like that, what that person has to do, he has to hold a kind of a trolley and then move through a passage. So how the particular movement of that person body was there, it was analyzed. And if it is changed, you know, it was not, he was not allowed the access into the wall, right? So he has to hold a trolley kind of a thing and then push it and then move it. So what you do that is called, you know, how you walk is going to be called the a uh, gate analysis kind of a thing, which is very high, you know, I would say kind of a thing which is working right now for us. Now, apart from this, you know, these are the some common factors over there. So we were talking about the MFA and you can combine things like the something you know with the something you have and somewhere you are with the conditional access policies as well implement multi-factor authentication so you can overall improve your security over there so by implementing azure ad's user management access control and multi-factor authentication functionality organization they can make sure only authorized user they have the access to their resource and significantly enhance overall security over there now apart from this your microsoft entra id it provides you some other relevant feature as well right so this is going to be very simply your few things like your azure ad connect okay uh, now the name has been changed it is now entra id connect okay so i forgot to change the name over here uh, if we will talk about this its name is now become entra id connect now what is the purpose of it few things we'll be talking about so while this azure ad it form the core of the microsoft im offering it is not the only solution that is going to be available over there it provides some additional feature over there like your enter id connect and your pim solution if you have used those kind of a thing so when we talk about this first of all what is the purpose of your azure ad connect now thing is that in your organizations what is happening you have the on-prem identity solution deployed over there and i'm pretty much sure most of the organization are utilizing the windows services for the same so when you have the on-prem data uh, or identities and then you have the cloud-based identity now i don't want to repeat the identity creation or provisioning of the identity i don't want that the, you know i have created user account on the on-prem access and now i will be repeating the whole process into the cloud and have the duplicate identities over there so purpose of the uh, you know enter id connect is to act as a bridge between your on-premise active directory and your enter id in the cloud so it has a feature pass through synchronization okay and you know your push you know, uh, your uh, password right back all these kind of a feature which will be helping you to sync your on premises with the your particular cloud identity itself so when we talk about its functionality it is facilitate the synchronization of user identity and access permission between your on premises directory and your cloud based directory environment which is enter id and it is going to allow you to manage user identity in single location for seamless access to both cloud and on premise resource using the same credential so you know it should not be happen because if there are duplicate identity your users has to remember duplicate of the your i would say you know passwords and again it will be making things over there itself now when we talk about the benefits of it so it will be first of all streamlining the user identity management for the hybrid environment because all these things are going to be uh, completely you know uh, most of the organization nowadays are using the hybrid and multi-cloud so it will be giving you the seamless experience between the both 
it provides you the single sign on experience for users for accessing both cloud and on premises resource and reduce the administrative overhead by consolidating user management tasks over there. Right? So it is going to be utilized as in this particular fashion. And then there is going to be the Azure PIM solution. PIM stands for Privilege Identity Management over there. So when we talk about the PIM, PIM is going to make sure that you have a secure access to highly provisioned resource over there. Means it focus on securing the access to highly privileged resources within your organization, like administrator account for critical system and function you know, functionality. Now it implement. You know, I am talking about the just in time access. Okay, or if you have heard, just enough access. These concept, right? So if you have heard about the just enough access, just in time access. So it is granting privilege access only when needed and even for that for limited duration and it is significantly reducing the risk which is associated with constantly elevated user privileges over there so if we will talk about its benefit first it is going to minimize the attack surface by reducing the number of user with permanent privilege accesses okay why i'm talking about this in simple layman term what is going to happen? I was giving you the example that you are working in a Microsoft for 10 years. Right? Now, if you are working for 10 years, over the years, you must have collected lot of permission. Let's say sometime you were working, you started as a as a you know IT analyst. Then you move into the admin, you know, IT admin. You gather the rights of an IT administrator. Then you go to the auditing, you get more right into the more resources to the database to here, there for auditing purpose. Over the 10 years, your identity, if every time I'm making you, let's say, one time I make you the application administrator, next time identity administrator, next time user administrator. So I keep giving you the permanent role. So over a 10 year, you will be keep accumulating a heap of the resources. So although it is part of the identity governance which we will be talking tomorrow but yes it is going to be the part of today's discussion as well so it over the 10 years of time you will be amassing a heap of a permissions over there which if let's say that user was for example your you know i was like taking the example of gg george so gg was doing this for the 10 years and suddenly what happened is one day attacker compromised the you know gg's username and password and there was no multi-factor authentication he got the access of gg so what will happen he already got enough access over there so at plus might be gg is abusing the this much of the access over there so just to be sure we are trying to reduce the number of users with the permanent release accesses over there which is going to provide us extra layer of security for critical resources mm -hmm by requiring approval workflow for village access okay what it is i will tell you again in lemon term because it is going to improve your auditability and accountability for all previous users so what will happen let's say for example while you are working in the organization let's say for example one day you know uh, i created one account for gg now gg was working with the database team and gg was requiring a database administrator role now because gg were acquiring and requiring that particular uh, you know your access you want to give the gg admin role now let's say instead of you know there will be option either i can give a permanent role to gg of you know your uh, i would say database admin and then you know one day i will do the audit and then remove that rule or either i can give this rule on the temporary basis like for you know let's say that for 30 days it was the project i give this rule for the 30 day after 30 day it will be removed over there second i can introduce an approval workflow over here what will be the with the approval workflow okay let's say for six months i am giving gg the permission of the database admin but with that database admin role what i am giving it is not 
instantly activated. So when Gigi required to work with that team, Gigi need to activate this role. And now I have given a time limit that maximum for 10 hours it can get activated. And when Gigi will be activated, this request can go to a particular person or an admin who will approve that okay for next 10 hours make Gigi be your database admin. And this thing can keep going on, let's say, for six months overall. So for six months, every time GG will be requiring to become a database admin, he will be just simply requesting, I want to become an admin, I want to become an admin, and the access will be approved every time. And after six months, this thing will be taken back from the GG. So no more he will be going over and can request to become database admin again. Right? So these things are going to be the part when you are discussing about the PIM feature. Privilege identity management. You have to just, you know, remember these things over there. Right? So this is going to be the Azure PIM feature over there. Now, okay, if you are working with the PIM and the, uh, you know, uh, and try to connect, you will be familiar with this. So, how this solution work together. So Azure AD, it serve as a central hub, right? So that enter ID, enter ID connect, AD name has been changed. They are acting as a central hub for user identity and for access management over there. So the AD connect, it facilitates the seamless integration of on-premises identity with Azure AD. While Azure AD PIM, it provides the additional layer of security, okay? Uh, additional layer of security for privileged accounts within the Azure AD environment. You know, it will be utilizing the solution together that organization they create and a comprehensive robust IAM strategy for enhanced security will be done over there, right? So these things are going to be the part which you will be going ahead and looking for over there itself. Now, after this, what we are going to do is we are going to deep dive into the user identity management where we are going to start with creating a user account in the entire ID portal and in the your own, you know, Azure portal, both I am going to show you these things practically. So we are going to start from that particular point over here, right? So let's just jump ahead and let's just talk about the how, you know, uh, it will work. Okay. So uh so as i was explaining what happened with the privilege identity management is either i can give a particular user for example okay let me take who asked that question just a minute huh? sri hari okay so sri hari let's say that this was you in the organization either i can make you a permanent admin permanent user admin who can change password who can do different things either I will make you a permanent user admin or I can make you permanent admin for 15 days, right? If I will make you a permanent admin, that's a security threat because if someday someone got the access of your account or you start misusing your permission. So what happened is usually we have the identity audits which we perform on the very specific days. So what happened is, Either I do that and after like six months, seven months, I just simply remove that permanent access of the user admin from you. Or I using the feature of PIM, I give you it only for 15 days. Second, I will be creating the approval. I will be creating approval based thing. Means if, okay, you want to be user admin, I will say that, okay, for 15 days, you can become the admin. But every time you want that, right, you need approval of someone. So you will be sending a request that I want to become the user admin for 15 days. Every day you come to the office, you request, I want to work as a user admin. Now that rule will be activated for 10 hours and then it will be revoked. Now let's say that in 10 hours, your task didn't complete. You said, okay, additional two hours, I want to go ahead and access this. So you will be given additional two hour of the access, right? So for 15 days, you can do one after you know, another, you can perform something like this, right? So this is one thing. So with the feature of PIM, 
you can give rather than giving someone the permanent rule you are trying to reduce attacking surface and you can give someone the access on a basis of the you know we can say temporary basis and even on an approval basis right so this is how microsoft azure has one of its features while we were discussing this so next thing that we will be seeing how we are going to go ahead and we are simply going to create the you know your user attributes user account creation of the user in this particular scenario itself so what we will be doing let's just simply jump into the your account part over there and then there is going to be the you know your identity and access management page so first i'm showing you in this particular part over there right so here it is going to be like you know your wonderful is here and you know i'm showing you first from the center glass pane from the entire id how things are going to be done over here now you will see the user section i can jump into the all user and you will be seeing it is going to be populated with the multiple of the users over there right now out of all these users you know you can see a whole heap of a users are there i want to create a particular user myself so what i'm going to do i'm simply going to click on the new user over here right so you will see different options we are having like i can create a you know one by one individually a single user i can invite some external user as well and options like i can create the bulk create or bulk invite also i can send for people to register i can create an you know simply a script that how many people i'm going to require to you know create the account and all so you know i'll be creating an a csv file in that file i'll be keeping the name of everyone who joined upload it and in the bulk operation it will be creating multiple user to me right so all these options are going to be the path and we are right now just going to simply create a new user over here right now i'm showing you from the entire id portal then i will be showing you from the you know difference from the azure portal itself so like for example if i want to go ahead and create the account so i will be utilizing let's say shri hari because he asked the question so i will be going with this one shri hari and extended by this domain if you want you can add your particular uh you know your particular uh custom domain as well if you want there is going to be the option for that as well now this is going to be the user principal name and how i want the name to be displayed like this a password is going to be generated so what i'm going to do for so if you allow me a moment i'm going to copy paste this auto generated username and password because i want to utilize it later on as well it might be helpful not in this session then might be in some other session over itself for me so i'm going to copy paste this okay so i have that and simply right now if you're clicking on properties next these are the you know your different attributes like address city so at the time of creation if you want to create or add these things you can add it or if you want to do it later on you can go ahead and work so here you will see assignment if you want to assign any specific role to your shri hari so you can assign it from here right now or if you want to do it later on you can do it later on so right now i am not doing anything but today's tasks are going to be very simple one so from tomorrow we will be jumping ahead and we will be seeing you know these kind of a thing adding roles groups all these things so here you will see that i have added a person that is going to be my okay ah uh, shri hari so i will just refresh this thing scroll it down here you will see towards the end there is a shri hari m that i created over there now after this one okay so what we are going to do is let me open my another browser okay and log in into my mct account over there 
because I want to show you one basic difference as well. Okay, because in that portal, I am going to have some of your Azure credits, which will be helping me to, you know, talk about the access control, RBAC and all, which will be laying all these firms new for the tomorrow session. It will be laying up all these things straight forward over there. So I'm just going to go ahead and so I'm going to just sign in over here into my MCT account. I'm utilizing it. The reason being, this is going to be my, you know, from the portal, how it, you know, usually used to look. I'm just going to show you that I'm going to have some of the resources created over here. So if I will go on to the part of all resources, in the all resources, you will be seeing these many resources I'm having as an admin over here, right? Now, these are all my cloud resources. What I will do on the left hand side, if you will see, there is going to be my favorite Microsoft Intra ID. So this is the another portal from where, where I can go and add all these things. So I will go into the user. And if you will see, uh, if I will be on the main page overview. So here it is just telling me now your Azure Active Directory is now Microsoft Intra ID. And you will be going ahead and working with the, you know, all the Intra ID. If you want to learn more, if you go ahead. You want to see the new name function migrate or you know you want to try the admin center you can click on this and it will be opening that entra id center over here for you right which is on the entra.microsoft.com so you can utilize that as well so you know this is whole scenario that you can go ahead and work with over here now i will go ahead and in the rules and uh, sorry if we will be having this, you know, particular part and Jitin to your answer your question, we need for that, we will be requiring a custom domain and then, you know, that on custom email address, you know, if you have Microsoft 365 as well, so it will be dropped into the, you know, the email and you know, usually you can add the email address and then you can send it, not directly, you will be seeing this option right now, right here itself. So here, when we talk about the, you know, creating a new user over this part, so we are going to go ahead and here, like here for Jitendra, we are going to create the scenario and display name will be this one. I'm just simply going to go ahead and utilize this, keeping this as well, maybe sometime it is useful so i'm not showing any username and password to you guys just keeping it to myself right even neither i'm adding the properties none of the attributes i am adding over here neither i'm adding the assignment to any group or role and simply going to create this user over there refresh it i will give it around 30 seconds to sync in and Okay, then over here. Oh, rather than refreshing whole page, only this I would have written. Huh? So here I'm going to have Jitender's username and you know, uh, as a user in my particular portal. Now, what I will do, let me open one more portal. Okay, now In this portal, I will be logging into the portal.azure.com. Here, I'm going to utilize the Jitain's account, for example. Right, and now I will be utilizing the password for the Jitain as well. Where is that? I have kept it. I have to close chat. I can't see all the chain. And sometime I copy the space, which caused the problem as well. So when you will be entering for the first time, like I was telling you that you will be given a temporary password. So this was the temporary password over there. And in this one, what I have to do, we have to create a new password over here. So I am just creating a new password for the GTN's account. So first time when you will be logging in, you will be asked to create a new password over here. You will create a new password. 
click on a sign in and you will stay you know now i'm clicking stay me sign in over there and it's saying that yes welcome to the microsoft azure i will skip this skip this and this is the now the portal where i am logging as the jitendra right now if you want to see the bit of a difference this is my main admin account and if i will go on to the all the sources of my user you can see i can have the access to a lot of resources over there from virtual machine to lot of key vaults which i forgot to delete to databases okay lot of thing is running right now in here i think which i should be deleting as they will keep charging me now apart from this if i come back to the jitend account so jitend is part of my enter id directory my azure active directory now what is happening if i will go there and try to see all these resources over there portal is empty i want to see virtual machine that is also empty but if i will jump into the main portal and here i jump into the your virtual machine you will see that i am going to have all these machines over here but when i am jumping into the jitendra account nothing is there now what happen is microsoft has done a very fine grain you know access control over there so you need to provide it a very specific user name the very specific password and only then you will be getting something like you know a very role based access control so you have to give at a very different different level the permissions to access anything into the microsoft azure over here now i will show you one simple thing jitens account like you will be going and you will try to access it the microsoft enter id so you can see that it is showing me that no access i don't have the access but by default if you are going with the default settings of the active directory you will see that a user can access or see the username password although that user might not be able to create a new user but might be able to invite guest user so what i have done on my active directory for security purpose i have gone ahead and on my active directory it's uh, enter id itself so see multiple time i am calling it the active but active directory because that's a habit for many years so if i will be going on to the properties section i have changed the settings properties your user settings i have changed these things that to guest user what kind of access you want to give administration center which do you want to restrict the access yes i want to restrict the access so these kind of this default setting change i have done and due to that you know you are saying that jitendra is unable to see anything over there so you can see that even enter id a different kind of a thing so how the rules are going to be different that part i will be showing you tomorrow not today but today we are just simply going to talk about the you know simple factors and all so if i will be jumping into the enter id centralized one here in the this is going to be my user for my nct accounts okay why i am using the demo account reason being licenses okay so that is a simple thing uh, i have used all my free tier licenses and i don't want to pay for the additional licenses that's why i am utilizing the free tier with my nct account okay now this is the very first thing that we were talking about creating the user account in the entra id so we have created second thing is going to be the you know going ahead with the user attribute and showing you the access control that how the access control the role based access control it works over here right so we will be going ahead and adding some of the access control over there which we will be looking for the you know your part and all over this particular scenario right so tomorrow we will be enabling multi factor authentication and lot of other things so for now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and jump into the portal and this is the different one so lot of logins i have done this is the jitens account and this is my mct account okay so i will come back to my main admin account and in my main admin account i am going to go ahead and 
I'm going to add the users and all over here. So I am going to see the user. So you can go to the Jitens account later on as well and edited properties. Like I want to give Jiten a few simple things. Like, you know, you can give Jiten his first name, last name. Okay, now I can give the job information, job title, I will say, Senior Cyber Security Analyst, right? And I can give the company name, or let's say Microsoft. Uh, okay. okay, department, De secure development, uh, secure development, I can say. Okay, so I can employ ID over there, so I can, you know, give like this, employ type, higher date, office location, who is the manager. If from here, let's say, for example, I'm saying Adarsham is the manager of this particular person, so I can add that as the manager. I can add sponsors. I can add the contact information. One of the very important thing in this whole scenario is going to be the something like, you know, which I'm not seeing right now, where it is, yes. In the setting, users location. So I can define because, you know, setting up your uh, resources like, uh, I would say, uh, India, setting up conditional access policies and creating a lot of the multi-factor authentication, you know, rules. This is actually going to play a very hard thing. Right, so assigning licenses and all. So you can go ahead and edit the attribute about your user in particular ways. So this is just a few things that we are seeing today. For tomorrow, what we have in a store is after creating a user attribute and all. So tomorrow we'll be seeing a bit more onto the you know your user life cycle management. Although we are seeing that a bit. We'll be going ahead and simply enabling the multi-factor authentication method for my user. Then we will be going ahead and you know talking about some of the best practices and all for tomorrow's session. And this is you know if I will talk about technically, these things are going to be the part which we are going to discuss over here, right? So first of all, I hope you guys have learned something new. So tomorrow we'll be starting with the multi-factor authentication and all these methodology instantly are back seeing things access control so from that part we are going to start and today what we have seen how you can create which portals we have how you can create the user edit the attributes login create the temp change changing the temp password all these simple things discuss about the different identity access management phase life cycle so during today's session, we have discussed all these things. Last five to you know, nine minutes that is left. Although I was planning to give 30 minutes of the questionnaire time. I think tomorrow we'll be finding that 30 minute time. But today, last nine minutes, I'm going to give for the question and answer. But before that, you know, I want to thank everyone for joining in today's session. And, you know, work with us.